The driver role is as important as it's ever been. We need the human to be able to, to feel it and then to tell us what he feels. Hello, my name is Adrian Newey. I am the managing technical partner at Aston Martin Aramco Formula One team. We're here with our principal partner, Martin, to learn how to unearth our greatness. I often ask myself why I've ended up doing what I'm doing. When I was about 10 or 12, my father gave me a Lotus 49 uh, Tamiya model 12 scale kit. Those models are great. They teach you how the suspension works, how the, a car goes together. And I was absolutely fascinated by it. Really from that point onwards, my schooling, my academics were geared towards the ambition of working in motor racing as a designer. I studied aeronautical engineering at university on the basis that racing cars are closer to aircraft than any other technology. And was lucky enough to get a job straight in from graduation and have loved it ever since. What I love about the job is the variety, how you interact with your colleagues, then going to the track. Because it's competitive engineering effectively, we get immediate feedback of how we're doing, which of course when we're doing poorly is painful, but it's very rewarding when we're doing well and at least you know and that, and that gives you a target constantly. Formula One cars have become very complicated beasts really as a result of the computer age allowing much greater in-depth research and then the budgets for the teams pretty much simultaneously increasing to allow us to go into all that depth. The result is a car that comprises over 15,000 parts and when you're looking at something like next year's car where we have a, a big regulation change for 2026, almost none of those parts will be carryover. It's a mammoth design and engineering exercise. What I particularly enjoy is, is kind of looking at it holistically and from all aspects. Any Formula One team is similar in as much as it has a, an aerodynamics department, a mechanical design department, and then a simulation and, and race engineering department. Trying to make sure that those all work together, that we, we have a unified product, not only in its detail, but also perhaps just even more importantly in its concept. I find that process fascinating and working with my colleagues here at Aston Martin Aramco with Martin support um, is, is what we're here for. Because of the pressurised environment of, of being out competing, being very visible, we are always struggling to balance everything and at times that means things run away, perhaps we chase the wrong direction and we have to react very quickly to that, recognise if we're going in the wrong direction, have the appetite to say, no, hand up, this isn't working, let's try a different avenue. That's a lot of the judgement and it's, it, it requires being very honest with yourself to be constantly um, self-critical and make sure that we're trying to extract the maximum with a, a completely open mind. I've been in the business for a long time, uh, since I graduated, which was in 1980. I've seen a lot of change in that time, particularly as a result of the computer age and the depth that we can now go into research. Those tools allow us that, that much greater depth and understanding but they are exactly that, they're tools. It still takes the human to come up with the ideas and to, to then use those tools to the best of effect. If you take the example we have now where we've got this big regulation change for 26, trying to understand, okay, what are the implications of these rule changes, including how does the, the power unit with its much greater electrical side affect the chassis design, the vehicle dynamics of the car, etc. It, it's a very, complicated equation which I think even with AI advancing as rapidly as it is we're a long way off. It really depends very heavily on human ideas and that really is, is I suppose the essence of Formula One, that ability to, to conceptualise, to react quickly and to be self-critical. 
When I started, there were no onboard data recorders, no telemetry. The input of the driver was absolutely critical because the only clue the race engineer had about how the car was behaving is really from what the driver told him. As we've moved into the data age where we have literally thousands of sensors on the car transmitting in real time, of course we can tell a great deal about what the car's doing. Ultimately, the reason it's doing that very often is down to the driver. It's down to the driver's input. Drivers are very often wonderfully intuitive animals. They will adapt their driving to suit the strengths and weaknesses of the car. If you want to try to find out what those weaknesses are, then you have to interrogate the driver and force him to think about it and force him to say, what are those weaknesses? The driver still has a, an absolutely vital role. An example of that is all the Formula One teams now have what we call driver in the loop simulators. These are very much engineering tools. They're not for driver development primarily. They're for engineering tools so that we can evaluate different setups springs, roll bars, wing settings and so forth before we go to the next race or indeed fundamental uh, research, suspension geometry, aerodynamic map shapes, those sorts of things that we can't normally change at a race meeting but we want to know for future development direction. Why do we need the driver in the loop rather than just doing it as a pure offline simulation? The reason is that none of us have managed to create a good enough driver model that can effectively then articulate what that model, that synthetic model is feeling. So we need the human to feel it and then to tell us what he feels. The driver role is as important as it's ever been. You could argue in some ways it's even more important because we now have the ability to combine that directly with the data to understand exactly what the car is doing and what we need to do to make it faster. We are a team of around 300 engineers. Collaboration, of course, is, is the most important single aspect. In many ways, more than individual talents within the organisation, it's how we all work together, make sure that we communicate and, and we extract the most from each other. For me personally, what does that mean? Well, it means I spend probably around 50% of my day at the moment, working with the other engineers either at a one-to-one -one level gathered around a CAD station or in meetings. I generally, if I'm honest, prefer the former because I think the one-to-one -one meetings are quite often where you can do the brainstorm ones. The big meetings, if you're not careful, become procedural information exchanges without actually coming up with new ideas, which is, of course, the important bit. So we need a mixture. We're um, under intense pressure for deadlines to get the major architectural parts of the car, which is the gearbox followed by the chassis, the front suspension, the rear suspension, etc., released in time for testing in January. In truth, probably spending a bit more time than I would like, about 50% of my time, at the drawing board or looking at the at the CFD, the Computational Fluid Dynamics, the Vehicle Dynamic Programs, etc. and trying to make sure that we're coming up with a concept that we're all happy with. I never want it to, to not be with everybody's involvement and buy-in. Some of the motivation is that fear of failure. I've tried to learn to use that constructively because it's that difference between too much pressure or pressure mismanaged causing mistakes versus leading to quite a focused and tunnel vision-like state. Uh, my wife, over the last three, four months since I've joined the team, complains that I'm in a a design trance and I, I understand what she means that I don't kind of see left and right and I'm probably not terribly sociable. What limited processing power I have is, is all concentrated on the task in hand given these pressing deadlines but that's not a state to, to stay in for too long and that all sounds quite egotistical as well. It's really ultimately all about the team and how we, how we work together. Curiosity is probably the biggest single thing. Be curious, look around, talk to your colleagues, your peers, try not to pester them of course, but 
don't be afraid to ask questions. There will be setbacks, of course. You've just got to kind of dig deep, try to, to get through it, and be aware that, that life is not flat, both personally and professionally. It's, it's, you have your, your good periods and your bad periods. Enjoy the good periods, but also if you're in that bad period, try not to get depressed about it because these things always change, they always come around. Learn to grow broad shoulders, have confidence in yourself. The honest answer is I have absolutely no idea. We are in a period of transformation. We've, as a team, grown rapidly. It's really in a now a settling down phase, having grown hugely in numbers. We now need to settle everybody down, get them working well together. I've never been a believer in saying we will now achieve this or we will now achieve that. I think the satisfaction comes from working together to, to move forwards. If we can achieve that in 2026, that will be the first tick. It means performing at your best, setting your PBs if you like. It's really getting satisfaction from your work, I think, is probably the best single thing. If you feel you're doing the best job you can personally, then derive satisfaction from that. That will be greatness. Mm -hmm.